So this is the Turfway Park All Stakes Pick 5, and it comprises races 8 through 12 on Saturday's card at Turfway, and this is a daytime card as opposed to the normal night racing we see from Turfway. Uh, and leg one is the Rushaway Stakes. It's ungraded at 250000 It's the eighth race run at a mile and a 16th in the all-weather for three-year-olds, and this is a big field. And uh, we had noted in prior postings that uh, when it, the weather's a little colder um, than on synthetic, front runners do have uh, a little bit of an advantage. Um, in this case, we don't have too many, um, and uh, that makes it rather interesting with all the late runners you see. Uh, but what I, I don't I don't think Tricari is good enough as the lone uh, the lone confirmed front runner. But if you look at Twirling point and neat of the two. I think they're both eligible to move forward. Um, it's. I just don't think they're, they're they're necessarily either of them is good enough to carry this field all the way. If I had to choose one, maybe twirling point. But uh, there's just too many late runners, and I think they're going to get swallowed up by the cavalry charge. Um, so I think you can comfortably use one or the other or both of them if you want. More for the bottom of the exotics. But uh, um, I, I just did just, just too much uh, they have to deal with, I think, uh, with a big field like this. Uh, of the later runners, Blue Eyed George, I thought, ran a really good third um, behind Encino and Epic Ride in the Battaglia. And he was really coming late, and he kept on, and that's what I really like to see. And he was fighting with Epic Ride in the stretch. And as we know, Epic Ride is a really solid synthetic horse uh, who's moving on to... Uh, to the dirt. I'm not sure where he's going yet, but uh, uh, if he was in here, he would certainly be the one to beat. Uh, so Blue Eyed George, I think, is heading in the right direction. And uh, this is going to be one of those races where whoever can work out the best trip is going to have it. But uh, Blue Eyed George is a prime win candidate for sure. Mugatu uh, ran pretty well in the Bataglia as well. I just don't think he's good enough. He's a cut below right now. And uh, I think you could comfortably use him underneath in the exotics, but that would be the extent of my interest in him. Uh, Tennessee, to me, looks like the one to beat. Brad Cox and Luann Machado are perfect, three for three together. And Luann Machado is the best jockey at Turfway, without question. Uh, we've seen it in the cocktail lounge at Trust the Profits every Thursday night. Um, the, many times when you don't expect his horse to do anything, Luann gets the most out of him, so... Really potent combination. Tennessee is doing exactly what you want a three-year-old to do. His late fraction and his class level are improving with every race as the class level of the race increases. And that's always huge. More importantly, his late fraction is getting better without compromising his early fractions. And what that means is that's a horse who's running against himself as opposed to the field, and he's just getting better. So I look for Tennessee to run a big one here. Uh, Two Ghosts is an interesting horse. He runs in a form cycle of three. If you look at his form, uh, every he every uh, he has a very distinct pattern. Uh, he starts off with a kind of an okay race, gets a little better the next, and then he runs his peak in the third, and then it starts all over again. Well, he came off the bench in his last race and didn't do much, but if you go by the form cycle, his second race off the layoff should be pretty good, but it won't be his best. So I think two ghosts will run a, a decent race, but uh, more than likely, due to the way he runs with his form cycle, underneath in the exotic set of price is probably the extent uh, of his interest in this race. Footprint, um, to me, it ran a nice racing and seized the gray, who we like in the Jeff Ruby. So this will be a good way to evaluate what to do with seize the gray and the Jeff Ruby if Footprint comes back and runs well here. Uh, I think he will. Kenny McPeaks, you never know. They're unpredictable from one start to the next. But this one has been getting progressively better. And he ran, uh, like I say, he ran a good race. He closed very well. He takes a little while to get going, so synthetic seem, would logically meet him right between the eyes. Uh, more often than not, later runners can do well on synthetic, so uh, I think it's a good fit here. I'm just a little concerned that it just takes him a little bit extra than some of the others to get into stride, and that costs him. But uh, I think he has very good form, 
and I would consider him to be a prime candidate as well. So if we look at this race, I think Tennessee is the one to beat with Blue-Eyed George and Footprint being the logical next contenders. Link two is the Latonia Stakes. It's ungraded at 250,000. It's the ninth race, run at a mile and a 16th on the all weather for four year olds and up fillies and mares. And this is going to be a short discussion. Botanical's the horse to beat. How can you, you know, this horse is just too darn good. He's five, she's five for five at Turfway on synthetic. And uh, we know, you know, bombed out in the Oaks last year, but came right back in, in her debut this year and, and, and with an impressive run. Um, I don't see anybody in here who can beat her, and that includes Chop Chop. Uh, I think Botanical is, uh, there's a couple of horses to give a little bit of a, a challenge on the pace, but I don't think that there's anybody here who can deal with her. And uh, Sister Luann, maybe uh, to a degree, uh, but her form really hasn't been very good. Uh, We'll include a couple others, uh, you know, to, to think about. Fancy Martini's form has been butt awful the last two races, but uh, is shipping in here, and I just have a feeling that this horse is going to bounce back, has uh, a class edge over quite a few of them here. So I think Fancy Martini is one to think about. Forever After All as well uh, looks to be poised to run a good race. And uh, I think we'll factor in here more for the exotics I'd use. Same with Fancy Martini um, and Chop Chop. Uh, Chop Chop is going to run her race. She should. Uh, we'll be closing late. I just don't think she's as good as Botanical. And that's really the bottom line to it more than anything else. Uh, you just can't go against a horse for the course like this. Uh, in this scenario, and uh, this is a case where, uh, again, I think the track being on a, a cold day uh, may favor early pace a little bit, and it, certainly that would be right in Botanical's wheelhouse. So to me, uh, short discussion, Botanical all the way. Leg three is the Kentucky Cup Classic. It's a grade three. It's the 10th race. It's running a mile and an eighth on the all-weather for four-year-olds and up. And this is a pretty good race. I think it's a three-headed monster, uh, basically led by Wolfie's Dino Ghost, Fantastic Again, and Surly Furious would, to me, be the primary win candidates. And I think it's a pretty form-fitting race. Uh, Wolfie's Dino Ghost is the lone speed uh, the one, the confirmed front runner, and is coming off the bench. hasn't run since December. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem, especially for horses so proficient on the uh, poly track. The only thing about Wolfie's Dino goes to me is that he is six years old, and this is when we start. Uh, you know, it's the age where you have to start watching him to see. Um, if maybe Father Time's catching up with him a little bit. But I don't see any reason to believe that Wolfie's Dino Ghost won't run his race. And um, again, he may have a track favoring him where if it is a cold day, early pace may have a little bit of an advantage. Now, he's going to get some pressure from most notably Cellist and Fantastic again. And I, in my opinion, that might be enough to uh, to limit his possibilities of wiring this field. He's certainly capable and can do it, but I, uh, I, I think that this may be a little too tall to order with all the early pace uh, early pace pressers signed on. Tio Magico is probably going to run a pretty good race as well. So. Um, I think Wolfie's Dynagos is one you certainly have to use, is, is definitely a win candidate, but I think might be up against it a little bit, especially with quite so long a layoff. Uh, if we look at the uh, early pace pressers, Cellist is a horse that just doesn't win. Um, that's really the bottom line, and I think that's the defining characteristic of horses you want to think about in this race, is horses who know how to win. And Cellist isn't one of them. Yeah, he's been running pretty well his last few races, but he never gets the job done. And I think this is another scenario. Uh, moving to synthetic, I don't think is going to change that very much. I think it's just a matter of the horse's makeup and probably is one with talent who just kind of likes to run around the track. So... Uh, can get underneath, I'm, I'm sure. I don't worry about that part of it, but not as a win candidate. Now, Tio Magico, Phil D'Amato doesn't ship unless he means business. Uh, Tio Magico is a nice horse. Um, he's got in, uh, I like the fact that he, he knows how to win and likes to. 
Um, he is coming from California. Granted, that's true. But I don't know that he's necessarily facing uh, too much class here at field that he can't be competitive here. And more importantly, he's got Luan Machado aboard. And as we've mentioned, uh, ad nauseum, I know, but you cannot leave Luan Machado off uh, if he's got a horse in the race. He's just too good at Turfway, and Turfway is a jockey's track. So uh, I'm going to use Tio Magico. I think he's just a hair below uh, our three primary win candidates, but I think he can get underneath, and hopefully you'll get a, a good price. Fantastic again, I like in this race, too, as the primary win choice. Uh, I don't think the 12-hole is going to bother him at all. I think he's just too good at uh, turfway and on synthetic surfaces. Um, I think he will be able to get right to where he wants to, which is just off of Wolfie's Dino Ghost, and then he'll wait to pounce. Should have tactically a jump on the later runners. And um, he's a four-year-old horse um, who is just seems to be, uh, you know, uh, hadn't run for a while and then came right off the bench and, and went right back to uh, his winning ways. Uh, with a nice speed figure. So I think it's logical that he's going to move forward and run a big one. I like Fantas Fantastic again a lot in this race. Verstappen uh, is a horse that um, is moving back to synthetic, had some good success at Turfway. And uh, from that, we, we had a pretty good idea the Elkhorn was going to be a good race for him. And we got him at 16 to 1. Here's the problem. The horse hasn't built on it. He just hasn't. Um, He's been in the in the mix. Uh, you keep waiting for him to take that jump forward, uh, and he just really hasn't done it. He's kind of plateaued. And more importantly uh, is that he just can't seem to get over the hump. The Red Smith, he had the lead in November, and, and he let somebody catch him, and he seems to always find somebody who's more uh, has more desire to win the race than he does and that's really my big knock on Verstappen I think he's he's going to run a good race we know he's proficient on synthetic surface but I think underneath is probably the extent of uh, of his participation in this race uh, then we come with Surly Furious and of the late runners you got to love a horse like this he just he knows how to win uh, the last race, he just toyed with that field. It was unbelievable. He won by eight lengths. He just blew them away. At six years old, he's coming into this race in the best form of his life. And it's logical to assume that he is going to run another big one. My only question is, his speed figures are just a hair below Fantastic again and Wolfie's Dino Ghost. And that's really the only issue I might have. So... Uh, ideally, what we would have to have happen is Wolfie's Dino Ghost gets pushed uh, significantly and has to run a little quicker on the front end than expected. And if so, uh, that does happen. I still think Fantastic again will be right there, but it does improve the chances of Surly Furious. Uh, but of the late runners, I think he's certainly one uh, you have to consider as a primary win candidate. Now, I'm just going to mention one other horse, and that's Harlan Estate. I'm not going to use him uh, necessarily. I don't think, you know, underneath is probably best, uh, the best shot this one has. But Turfway has a way of rejuvenating horses. <laughs> you don't expect to run a big race. And I just got a sneaky feeling Harlan Estate moving to synthetic from the turf is going to be one of those. Uh, I can't explain it. Um, it's just call it a hunch, and uh, you can call me crazy if you want. But uh, Harlan Estate, I just uh, have a sneaky feeling you're going to get boxcar odds more than likely, and I think probably can get into the mix, and I'm probably going to use on the bottom of the try and the super uh, as a horse that, uh, uh, <laughs> again, that uh, that uh, the, turf way, the turf way revival, we'll call it. So, uh, but as far as primary win candidates, um, I fantastic again is the one for me, and followed by Wolfie's Dino Ghost and Surly Furious. Link four is the Bourbonnet Oaks. It's a Kentucky Oaks Prep. It's ungraded at three hundred thousand, running at the uh, at a mile and a sixteenth on the all weather for three year old fillies, and uh, this is a. Uh, it's an interesting race. Alpine Princess, the word is that she will run in this race as opposed to the Fairgrounds Oaks. And that's what that K writ there was to symbolize that she's dual entered. But she's going to run here. And uh, 
as that is the case, I think she is the horse to beat. She has a class edge over most of the other horses in here. Um, and I think uh, because of the situation with the weather where I, I think early pace may have a bit of an advantage, she's going to be in very good position behind the two front runners, Maxi Superfly and Pink Polka Dots. Uh, of those two, Maxi Superfly give a little bit of an edge because uh, she has familiarity over the track and is just coming off a career best effort uh, in an allowance race where she, she beat Everland uh, and ran a really solid race. Building off of that, she should be competitive here and does have an outside chance of taking them all the way under the right circumstances. Pink Polka Dots hasn't run on synthetic yet, um, and I just like Maxi Superfly's uh, familiarity over the track, let's say, if I have to choose between the two. And um, Pink Polka Dots being on synthetic for the first time, uh, you know, Harvey Peck used to say, never bet on a horse doing something for the first time. So uh, that's my little bit of reservation. If you want to uh, use her as a front runner in here, I... You know, I wouldn't talk you out of it. I just uh, I just got a feeling that uh, Maxi Superfly might be a better bet. Uh, Alpine Princess should be able to rate off of them. Uh, she can get on the lead if she wants to um, and may try to wire the field just being the best horse and being the classiest. And she could conceivably do that. Uh, but I think a rating trip would probably be suit her better. Uh, whatever they choose to do, I think she has a class edge over this field. That's my primary reason for picking her on top. Um, moving on up is a horse who uh, is Im improving, but um, I don't know that he at the level that we could consider him a primary win candidate or a win candidate at all. Uh, but I think we'll just keep running. And for that reason, particularly when you have some other horses who are a little questionable, like Saratoga Secret at two turns, um, then maybe uh, can get into the mix at pretty good value. I like Everland as a horse. I just think that uh, I'm not so certain that the track is going to be favoring. If you go back to that race with Maxi Superfly, it was a very similar situation. It was a track where speed was favoring, and Everland did not run a bad race. I just think the track was against her. That's all it was. Uh, I thought she closed well and looked every bit like a, a good horse. If you go back the race before that, they turned the tables. Everland won. Maxi Superfly finished third. Uh, so uh, that's the only thing I'm thinking about in terms of uh, late runners' chances here. I just think the tri track might be a little bit against them. Everland is absolutely a horse who can win this race. I don't want to mince words about that. I just think the track might be against her, but I, I think you definitely want to use. I just have a feeling it might be more likely to get her underneath. Trial is a very intriguing horse, and obviously, uh, as we've belabored, Luan Machado aboard is a big appeal. Uh, hasn't run around two turns yet, but looks like a horse that may be... Um, uh, being by run happy, you should be able to get a mile on a 16th. I'm not worried about that. Um, and trained by Tom Drury, he knows what he's doing. If he puts this horse in the race, I would have to believe there's some serious consideration. Definitely needs to take a move forward. There's no question about it. Uh, but has the kind of fractions to tell me that uh, if she can run that level at two turns, then she can factor in this race. Probably more likely for under, but maybe worth a shot in the dark uh, at what will be pretty good odds. So the next, uh, the last leg is, of course, the Jeff Ruby Stakes. It's the Kentucky Derby prep we want to see. Uh, obviously, it's, it's had implications the last couple of years with Rich Strike and two fills. Uh, running a mile and an eighth on the all-weather for three-year-olds. And uh, this is a big field as usually is the case at Turfway. And uh, we look at the early pace runners, and Northern Flame, they list as an E. I'm going to guess he's probably going to rate, but he may uh, he may inherit the lead. And he also, uh, given that, like I say, the conditions may be speed favoring, and if they are, uh, may try to wire the field just based upon uh, his class and his talent. He is a good horse. He's been a cut below, and I think he is a cut below the better three-year-olds, but I think he has every chance in here. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not real high on him, but I think he's one you certainly can consider using. 
Uh, from the Pace Pressers, Freedom Principle and Woodcourt, uh, I don't really consider win candidates, but they've got Adam Biskitza and Luann Machado as the jockeys. Turfway's a jockey track, um, and that's why I'm including them as horses. Likely to use underneath. Of the two, Woodcourt probably has a little bit better chance to factor. Ran a better Rebel Stakes than I expected. Uh, he had had it all his own way the race prior. So uh, going into the Rebel, I thought um, that he wouldn't necessarily do as well, but he did. So this is a horse who's definitely moving forward and uh, is progressing. I don't know that he's got enough to win this race, uh, but he is one to think about. And I certainly think you want to use underneath. Uh, of the pace pressers, the mid-pack horses, Seize the Gray, I like to win this race. I really like that Oakland Allowance race, his last out, debuting at three, ran a career-high number. And he, at two years old, he had, did demonstrate some class and some talent. So uh, I think he's poised and ready to make, make another move forward. I think he's just a horse, perhaps, uh, that grew over the winter and has filled out, grown into himself a little more. But he looked awful good. Uh, should be sitting off the leaders and uh, will have every chance uh, making the first run. And so sees the gray. Not going to get a good price because he's owned by Meyer Racehorse, but uh, we've, we've got to have the winner, and I think it sees the gray. Uh, Dancing Groom is a, a shot in the dark for me. And I, you know, uh, and, and I've mentioned it in my individual posting on this race, and I'll say it again. He reminds me of Congruent a couple years ago. Congruent showed flashes here and there on dirt, on turf, uh, but just couldn't quite put it together. Then they put him on synthetic and boom, he wins the Jeff Ruby uh, or the Bataglia. I can't remember which. But this is a horse that has shown some ability. Uh, he's going to come from the clouds. We know that. Uh, but this is the kind of surface that maybe brings the best out of him. So at boxcar odds, why not? Uh, this is, you know, Turfway's notorious for horses like this getting rejuvenated when they get on the synthetic uh, and uh, when you least expect it. So I'm throwing Dancing Groom in there. And if I don't get my, uh, my two primary choices, why not? Uh, from the late runners, endlessly I like an awful lot. Uh, won the El Camino Real in the debut on synthetic. It is a different surface at Golden Gate than it is at Turfway, that's true. But I'm not worried about that very much because this horse just likes to win. This is a very competitive horse, has that drive uh, to win races. And uh, uh, I think even coming from California, uh, where the class is suspect, I think this field will meet her, her, uh, him between the eyes. And... Um, I really like the form of this horse. And again, the will to win, always love to see it. So endlessly, the price will probably be short, but I think is a, uh, other, along with Seize the Gray, they're the two primary candidates. I believe Agate Road is going to run in the Louisiana Derby. Either way, you could carbon copy my assessment of Ag Ag Agate Road on synthetic or dirt. It doesn't matter. This horse has a lot of seconds. This horse needs a lot to do late. And I think Mike Rapoli is just jonesing to get a horse into the derby. So he's throwing uh, all triple espresso, Agate Road, Timeless, anybody in the stable he can get into a derby prep with any chance to win, he's taking it. Agate Road is a pretty good horse. He, he, you know, he closed well in the Sam F. Davis, and he was against the bias. I'll give him that. But he just always seems to find somebody better. And if he was running in this race, that would be my assessment. It'll be the same in the Louisiana Derby. So if Agate Road mysteriously shows up here as well, put him underneath, and that's the extent of it. So we take a look at our ticket. And in leg one, race eight, we're going to use two, nine, and 12. We're going to single botanical in the ninth race. Um, and uh, leg three, race 10, we're going to use one, three, and 12. I think we're very safe there. Uh, in leg four, race 11, we're going to use one, four, and seven. And in then leg five, race 12, the Jeff Ruby, we're going to use... I seize the gray and endlessly, and then I'm using Dancing Groom, and here's why. If I don't get my two chalks, I want a long shot, and I think Dancing Groom is going to come off at big odds, and given the fact that we get botanical at low odds, and we're probably going to get fantastic again at low odds, we need some value, so let's try to uh, pump it up with that. If we could get 
trial home in the Bourbonette and we get dancing groom home in the Jeff Ruby. We got a monster payout. So we'll go three by three by three by three. Uh, so that's uh, three to the fourth power. That's $81. And that's on a $1 base. So it's 40 50 at the 50 cent base. Uh, I think that gives us some good chances to, to take this one down at a moderate outlay. And let's go for it. 